Welcome to Statics. Solving three-dimensional equilibrium problems. In this video, I will describe a procedure for solving three-dimensional equilibrium problems. The basic methodology is the same for two-dimensional problems. We will be summing all forces to zero and summing all moments about an arbitrary point to zero. For 3D problems, we use vector notation. Let's look at a more detailed description of the steps we will follow. First, we will construct a free body diagram and include all applied and reaction forces and moments. We will also count up all the unknowns to ensure that there are no more than six, since that is the maximum amount we can solve for using the tools taught in this class. Next, we will list all the applied forces and all the reaction forces in vector notation. After we have listed all of our forces, we will sum forces to zero by adding all force vector i, j, and k components independently, setting each of them to zero to get three equations. Next, we will list all of our moments in vector notation. We begin with any applied and reaction moments, since these are free vectors. We will then list all moments caused by the applied and reaction forces about an arbitrary point of our choosing. We can choose any point to some moments. But if we are strategic about the point we select, we can save ourselves some work. We will get each moment by crossing a position vector from the point with the force vector. Once we have all our moments listed, we will sum moments to zero by adding all moment vector i, j, and k components independently, setting each of them to zero to get three equations. We will have six equations that we can then use to solve for our unknown. Let's apply these steps in an example. In this example problem, we have a bar that extends from B to C to D along the positive y-axis, then bends 90 degrees from D to E in the negative x direction, then bends 90 degrees from E to F in the positive z direction. There is a smooth slider support at point C, which allows rotation of the member about the z-axis. It also allows translation in the z direction. In other words, it can slide freely up and down the vertical support. All other translations and rotations are prevented at the support. There are also two cable supports, one from B to A and one from F to G. There is an applied force of 500 pounds at point B, acting in the negative z direction. There is also an applied moment at point D, acting in the positive y direction. This animation may help you visualize the member and its supports. We are given the coordinates of each point. We will find the reactions at point C and the tension in the two cables. Our first step is to construct a free body diagram with all applied and reaction forces and moments. Here is my free body diagram. I showed the applied force at B and the applied moment at D in red. The support reactions are shown in blue. We have our two cable support reactions, shown acting in tension in the direction of the cables. The other reactions occur at the smooth slider support at C. The support permits translation in the Z direction, but not in any other direction. So we get no reaction force in the Z direction, but we do get X and Y direction reaction forces. The support permits rotation about the z-axis, but not about any other axis. So we get no z-axis moment reaction, but we do get x and y-axis reaction moments. Let's count up our independent unknowns. They are four reaction forces and two reaction moments for a total of six. We can solve for six unknowns with our six equations of equilibrium. The next step is to list all of our forces in vector notation. We will include our single applied force and our four reaction forces. For convenience, I have made a table with our five forces listed. The i, j, and k components of the first three forces can be written based on inspecting the free body diagram. Force vector Fb acts in the negative k direction with a magnitude of 500 pounds. I have written the reaction force vectors Cx and Cy in this format with the unknown Cx and Cy magnitudes pulled out for convenience. 
since this is the way I will enter the vectors into my calculator. I will get vector TBA by multiplying its unknown magnitude by a unit vector acting in the direction from B to A. The unit vector is equal to a position vector from B to A found using the coordinates of the two points, divided by the position vector magnitude. Here's vector TBA. I get vector TFG the same way, except the unit vector points in the direction from F to G. I add the vectors to my table. Now we have all of our force vectors. The next step is to sum forces to zero by adding all force vector i, j, and k components independently to get three equations. I sum x direction components to zero by adding all the non-zero terms in my i component column. I have included the unknown force magnitudes in my equation. I sum y direction components to zero by adding all the terms in my j component column. And I sum z direction components to zero by adding all the terms in my k component column. I will name these equations 1, 2, and 3. The next step is to list all moments in vector notation. First, I will list the single applied moment and the two reaction moments. Again, I will put them in a table for convenience. The applied moment at D has a magnitude of 3,000 inch-pounds and is acting in the positive y direction. The reaction moments, which I call CMX and CMY, are acting in the x and y directions, respectively. Next, I will include the moments caused by the applied force and the reaction forces about an arbitrary point. Let's look at all of our forces and then select a point to sum moments. Here are all the forces that we identified in a previous step. If we sum moments about point C, then the CX and CY forces will not be included since their moment arms will be zero. Another good option is to sum moments about point B so that the force FB and force TBA will not be included. I will sum moments about point C. So I will find three additional moments. A position vector from C to B cross force FB, a position vector from C to B cross force TBA, and a position vector from C to F cross force TFG. Since we are summing moments about point C, we need two unique position vectors, RCB and RCF. RCB is found using the coordinates for points B and C. Remember that the position vector originates at the point we are summing moments. I get RCF using the coordinates for points F and C. Now, I cross RCB with FB, RCB with TBA, and RCF with TFG. Note that I leave the magnitudes TBA and TFG out of the vectors because they are scalars. This is okay based on the scalar multiplication rule of the cross product we reviewed in a previous lesson, and this is the way you can enter them into your calculator. Here are the vectors. Our list of vectors is now complete. Now we sum moments to zero by adding all moment vector i, j, and k components independently to get three equations. I sum x direction components to zero by adding all the non-zero terms in my i component column. I have included the moment magnitudes in my equation. I sum y direction components to zero by adding all the terms in my j component column and I sum the z-direction components to zero by adding all the terms in my k-component column. I will name these equations 4, 5, and 6. The last step is to solve for the unknowns in our six equations. Let's take a look at them and consider strategies for solving. Here are all six equations. The first three from summing x, y, and z force components, and the last three from summing x, y, and z moment components. Note that equations 3 and 6 have the same two unknowns, so TBA and TFG could be found by substituting one equation into the other. With those two variables known, we could solve for all the rest. This is a fine method, though it is slow. A faster way is to solve the six equations simultaneously, so that is what I will do. I put the six equations into this matrix form, with a coefficients matrix, an unknowns vector, 
and a constants vector. Note that I have pulled out the constants to the other side of the equal sign, resulting in sign changes on all of them. I will use Microsoft Excel to get my unknowns. First I will get the inverse of the coefficients matrix. I select a group of cells that is the same size as my coefficient matrix. Here it is, 6 by 6. With the full group selected, I type the function m inverse, open parentheses, and select as the input array the full coefficients matrix. Close parentheses, then press Control shift enter to populate my inverse coefficients matrix. Now I will solve for my unknowns by selecting a group of cells equal to the number of unknowns, 6. With all the cells selected, I type m molt, open parentheses, I select as my first array the inverse coefficients matrix, comma, and as my second array the constants vector. Close parentheses and control shift enter to get all of my unknowns. Here's a summary of my four reaction forces and two reaction moments. And my example problem is complete. This basic procedure can be applied to any 3D equilibrium problems. Some problems may have pulleys or springs incorporated but this procedure should be your general approach.